Our next guest is a winter sports star who's earned the nickname Monster. Mike Schultz brought home the gold and silver in snowboarding during the 2018 Winter Paralympics. But the road to Pyeongchang wasn't easy. In 2008, Mike suffered a terrible snowmobile accident, causing doctors to amputate his left leg. And now he is chronicling his new journey in a book called Driven to Ride, and he is here to tell us about it all. Mike, good morning good to morning. you. Good morning. Hey, good afternoon from, uh, from Norway. Norway. Three He's in the Norway. Afternoon. So I, I have to ask you first, congratulations, first and foremost, not only on the book, but my understanding is, I want to make sure I got this right, you just won the silver in the Bang Slalom Snowboard World Championships uh, there in Norway. How does it feel? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's cute yeah, too. It's, uh, Woohoo! Yeah, check that out. Yeah, pretty awesome. It's uh, it's been going really good here. Uh, we've been here for just over a week now, and Team USA is crushing it. Um, yeah, we got three world champs and then my silver on the snowboarding side. Monster dominating. There you go. Well, you have such a journey. I want you so for people to have some perspective here um, on your rise. Take us back to that day. Mm. I know it was a tough day back in December of 2008. It was just days before you were competing in the high octane uh, realm of snowcross. And then you find yourself in a hospital. A doctor tells you he wants to amputate your leg to save your life. Take us back to that day. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a tough one. It was, um, you know, I went through a lot of injuries in my day of racing snowmobiles and dirt bikes. I was at the top of my career at that time, uh, and uh, yeah, to hear those words was uh, was a punch to the gut for sure. I, uh, you know, I've been through it, and they can always bolt me back together, and you know, I'm good hmm. as new in six, eight, ten weeks. And this time, it was it was definitely a game changer. Um, yeah, I was a little unsure what my future was going to hold at that time. With that uncertainty, I mean, you fought and persevered and, you know, people are going through so much and can find motivation. You got back on a snowboard and snowmobile, and I can imagine how difficult that was. What was the impetus to that when you first got on? Like, what was that feeling that made you do that? Uh, you know, just a, a few weeks after the injury happened, the first time I got outside, back on my snowmobile again with out of prosthesis, uh, you know, that smile on my face of the excitement, the wind, you know, the wind in my face, um, I realized, you know what, it's not about how fast I'm going, it's about the challenge of of learning how to go faster. And mm. so that was kind of the motivation. And, and uh, in order for me to continue that, I had to create my own prosthetic leg to get me back into action. Wow. And, wow. Uh, I wanted to ask you about that, Mike, because I, I didn't know that about you. And I was shocked to learn that when you went to design your own um, prosthetics, you you were able to do it because you're an engineer. Well, I'm I'm a garage guy. I you know I had no technical schooling other than high school, but uh, you know I've got a problem solving solving mind, and uh, I love to to create and build things with my hands. And this was like the best project that I could work on to help keep me looking forward in a, in a positive direction. And uh, yeah, I built built my leg three months after after becoming uh, an amputee, and then seven months out compete at the Summer X Games Adaptive Supercross on a leg I built in my shop. That's amazing. Wow. That's extraordinary. And I just read you also engineered prosthetics for some of your competitors. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of them out here. That's one of the most rewarding things that's happened mm. with you know me becoming an amputee is. Um, I started my company Biodapt in 2010, just uh, you know, just a couple of years after I got injured. And then, you know, fast forward to the Paralympic Games in 18, and also coming up, you know, coming up here just in in, in just over a month, um, we, sh I, I show up at the starting line, and there's like 15 to 20 other athletes from around the world that are wearing equipment uh, that I built in my and shop. And built, wow. yeah, like you said. Uh, a few of them are my direct closest competitors, and uh, yeah, that's kind of a that's you know, sportsmanship that's, that's a, for you. I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, it wow. is. That is. And just as motivation, I know you were planning on not competing, and now you are in Beijing. Why the change of heart? Ah, uh, yeah. The first time around in 2018, it went so well. I, I mean, I was the flag bearer in the open cer opening ceremony. I won a gold and a silver, and. It couldn't go any better, but uh, you know, a couple of months went by, and I realized, you know what, I'm I'm not done competing. I, I'm still enjoying it. I'm still competitive, and um, yeah. So why why stop? So I might as well try it again. So wow. I just turned 40 here in uh, the midsummer, and uh, yeah, 
Still that, that's going. part of my motivation too. I got to keep these kids in line. Right? Yeah, don't stop. Don't stop. Uh, happy birthday. Congratulations. Give yeah. our best to your eight year old Lauren. I know she's got a keen interest in, uh, in seeing you succeed. Remember, Aww. everybody, there she is. The book is Aww. called Driven to Ride. It is out tomorrow. And be sure to watch the Winter Paralympics beginning on March 4th on NBC and Peacock. Well, so nice to meet you. Thank you for talking with us today. Oh, thank you guys. Absolutely. Have a great day. Incredible. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.